G'day guys and welcome to today's YouTube segment. Today we've got a really, really important subject that we're going to be talking about. One that's a little bit controversial. Often you jump on the internet and people write on the blogs really are extreme statements about what we're going to talk about. So, what's today's topic? So today's topic is preparing acorns for chickens to eat. Yeah, well said, Soph. Yeah, so for the last couple of weeks, about six weeks, we've been uh, reading up and making sure that we can present all the best scientific facts. And all the information we give you will be based on scientific reading and research by people way smarter than me. Maybe smarter as Soph, though. So today we're having a look at a science-based approach on feeding acorns to chickens. And a lot of people might say, or put in the comments with this segment, what's the point of having a video to do with um, feeding a chicken its acorns, which are potentially harmful if they're not prepared correctly, where you can just feed your chickens regular chicken feed. And that's a really valid point. Like all chicken keepers, we buy about 70 kilos worth of chicken feed at a time. But one thing this uh, pandemic and the tough times lately have shown us, that the stuff in the shops can run out real quick. And as chicken keepers, I believe we have responsibility to make sure we've always got backups at hand. And there's a lot of little life hacks you learn along the way as a chicken keeper, but using acorns as a substitute food, uh, and they're a really good, good product, the acorn, 6.4% um, protein, which is a little bit low, high in fiber, high in vitamins A and E. But by having a source of acorns, um, and if you compound that, by having a really good supply of, say, Currajong seeds, which are another really good chicken food. A little bit difficult to prepare, but we can do a video about that later. Between the sunflowers that we grow, the Currajong trees which we harvest, and the acorns, handful of oats or two, we could go maybe another month or so um, without having to buy food if there's an emergency. So in our garage, we've always got Currajong seeds, heaps of bushels of that hanging up. We've got, we try to harvest about 40 kilograms of acorns a year, uh, and also a lot of sunflower heads just for our veggie patch. As I mentioned, chicken keepers are a really good uh, resourceful bunch, and making sure that you've got food on hand. As our regular viewers know, we love to have a learning intentions and structure to our video. Uh, we've broken up into eight mini segments. Uh, the first one we've sort of talked a little bit about already, the benefits of acorns, nutrition, sustainability and survival. We're just going to be about maybe one more minute of that. Then we're going to do oak tree identification. This one's crucial because when you start reading um, documented scientific journals, they don't use the word acorn, acorn, acorn. They use the, the Latin name. So you need to be a little bit familiar with the Latin name if you want to fact check some of the stuff we say. Which we Number three, Sof? Uh, warnings and danger of acorns. Yeah, there are some dangers and warnings, and I'll talk about studies that have actually shown how to negate these dangers and what they are. Um, and a little bit more of that will be peer-reviewed studies that evaluate the toxicity of acorns. So we'll talk a little bit more about the science um, behind it. Um, Sof? Um, number five is how to store acorns. And that's quickly followed by how to shell acorns. Uh, there's what's called the car method or our preferred method. Uh, and this all then will lead to how to make acorns safe uh, to feed to poultry and additional benefits of acorns in permaculture. And before we move on, just say this video is made for both chicken keepers and quail keepers because there's a lot of documentation on uh, quails eating acorns and studies to do with that. All right, let's get into it. As mentioned before, uh, acorns are particularly high in vitamins A and E, as well as quite high in iron and potassium and a range of other minerals. When they're dried, they provide 6.2% uh, crude protein and 0.29% calcium. Uh, they also have uh, phosphorus, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, oak trees uh, do produce a prophylic crop, but they're definitely not worth planting in your own backyard if you're looking for instant sustainability. They take about 25 to 30 years to produce a reasonable yield, although they do live for more than 200 years. They're wind pollinated plants. So you don't get much in the way of uh, nectar and pollen for any other species, but when it comes to sustainability, they're a great option to boost up your chicken feed. Now the average acorn weighs about eight grams uh, when it's unshelled. 
And what you see in front of you is about 46.5 kilograms that I harvested with the help of my students at school, hence the school tubs, which will be sent back after this video if any schoolmates are watching. If you have a look here, this is our leftover harvest from last year. And it's a year old, um, still definitely worth, worth using as chicken feed. It's just left over. There's about five or six kilos here. And one thing you'll notice is there's a, it seems to have lost its luster. One thing with acorns is the fresher they are, generally the shinier they are. Get to know the types of oaks uh, that you are potentially going to feed your chickens or quails. Uh, and the reason I'm quickly doing this segment is when you uh, do a bit of a fact check or read some journal articles online, and I'll give you some references to some really good um, in-depth journals you can read where we have actually tested out the toxicity and effects of long-term feeding of quails and chickens oaks. Right, so just memorize the, or even just hit a screenshot, the actual uh, Latin name. So you got the Turkey Oak or the Australian Oak. This one is the most common one in Australia. Um, now this is uh, followed by the Portuguese Oak. Now the Portuguese Oak is really, uh, really easy to identify because its leaves are more shiny like a camellia, and it also is semi deciduous. Now the English Oak, is one that you, which I'm feeding my chickens currently. Uh, it's sort of the stock standard oak, especially in Australia, as we were colonized by the British. Uh, and the Portuguese oak is a smaller oak with more of a dusty colored leaves. Um, often you tell the difference between uh, oaks based on the leaves. But as I said before, really take note or hit a screenshot and get, it, get to know the Latin names because they're the names they used in scientific journals. Now, uh, this is a really cool one that you see quite a bit is Quirtus castifolia. Um, it's a pretty cool uh, oak. Now, the best oaks are the ones from America, and they're very rare here. But if there's any American audiences, um, sometimes they're called burr oaks uh, is one type or a Quirtus alba. These are the best oaks to feed your chickens and even feed yourself. And you identify these not really so much by the acorn by the leaves. If you, turn, if you go to an oak tree, turn it over and the, the back uh, of the leaf is white, you've hit the jackpot. Because all oaks are uh, edible, but they have different levels of moisture, size, and most importantly, tannin. And the white oaks have the least tannin, meaning they're the easiest to feed your, your chickens or quails, and they're the most palatable for yourself. All right. Now let's uh, we may as well jump in to the warning and dangers. Uh, they the thing is, acorns are coated in tannic acid, and before you think to yourself, "Oh wow, this is this is uh, horrifically bad news," this is also the acorn's greatest asset. Tannic acid is what's used uh, for tanning. Sometimes people I use uh, they get chestnut uh, bark and boil it and get the tannin out of that, and actually use it to to tan. Um, skin to make leather. Tannic acid is a, a mold and bacteria inhibitor, which means because the acorn is coated in it, it has a beautiful shelf life. You can pull an acorn that's been stored in a warm, cool, dry place, I mean, uh, you can still feed that to your chook after two years and it'll be perfectly fine. So although it is a bit of a curse, this tannic acid, uh, and we'll talk about what happens if chickens have tannic acid scientifically later, um, but it can be removed through regular soaking. Yeah, so now we're at the science arts part of our segment. So if you so if you just jump on Google and, and search for can you feed chickens acorns or can you feed quails acorns, you'll often get a result that pops up. But that result that you pop up is by a company that pays for sponsorships. So it'll say no, untreated uh, are poisonous. However, you click on that and then it'll take you like a, a chicken website or someone selling stuff. So the only way to really get proper information so if, is to do this thing called finding a peer-reviewed journal article. Uh, now, what is what is a peer-reviewed journal um, article? Yeah, you're right. It's a bit of a, a, a tongue-twister peer-reviewed journal, often called scholarly articles. They're an art, they're, what's happened is if you're a university student and you're towards the end doing your honours or doctorate, so at least four years in, you do this thing called a submission paper. And it's a paper usually about a thousand, I don't know, a thousand, hundred thousand words. And it's a study you do. And then you might study chickens and eating acorns or ducks eating acorns. 
and you do these careful scientific results and then you do your findings, but then they get submitted, given to experts in the field you are. And those experts do what's called citations. They put their name next to it, meaning that if anything you have is fake, made up or exaggerated, they get in trouble too. So you're looking for roughly around eight citations for a good article. So it's basically people who've done studies and had it checked by someone smarter than them. So yeah, so that's what a peer review journal is. So when you're looking for information on the net, there's a good website called Josta, J-O-S-T-O-R, and it's a search engine for just journal articles. But there's better ones out there too. So yes, that's what a peer review journal article. Good question, Soph. What's your next? Do you have um, any other questions? Yes. What happens if you don't wash acorns? Yeah, good question, Soph. I've got some notes to help me. Now, the information I'm giving you is from the, um, it's, it's called a journal article called The Effect of Different Levels of, of um, at The Effect of Different Levels of tannin on raw and processed acorns. It was it was put in the Journal of Animal Science in the year 2016. I'll put the details down the bottom of the screen with the, the author and so forth. Now this was a cool test and, and I like this one because it actually shows that you do have to wash your acorns. Yes, the wood duck, which is an American duck, really pretty, that crazy pretty duck, mm. that does eat acorns in the wild. Yep. But we don't have red ducks as pets here. But So we're talking about chickens and quails. Now this is a test that got 504 one day old broiler chickens. Soph, do you know what a broiler chicken is? Um, I'm pretty sure it's a meat chicken. Yeah, meat chicken. Do you know what, what, what breed we use for meat chickens primarily in Australia? Um, it was... Starting with C? C... Something cross? Oh, um, Cornish cross. Yeah, Cornish cross. That's our meat bird. And this test had it 504 meat birds and it was a 42 um, day experiment. Now one thing that, to be aware of, it was uh, battery hens, so it was hens in confinement giving nothing else. Now what they did is they measured um, 5, 10, 20 and 20% 20 of their diet acorns. Now their acorns were washed in various stages and they found that if you unwash, uh, oh what they did is at the end of the 42 days they gave all the chickens a chop, cut it open, looked at its small intestine, liver and pancreas to look at the size and difference and then weighed each carcass. So what they found is if you feed a chicken unwashed acorns, it's bad. There's less weight gain, okay, and your pancreas gets bigger. Uh, and at the end of your small intestine is this little thing called an ileum. And it's a little pointy end uh, before it goes to your large intestine, I guess. And it's responsible for absorbing um, lysine, which is an amino acid soap, which um, it absorbs crude, crude fat like fat stuff, yep. um, fatty acids, and converts it to energy to lower your cholesterol, okay? Now, if you're a bit of a person into drugs and stuff like opiates, you'll, you'll never do that. Drugs are bad. That's an area that gets damaged by drug druggies. So don't do drugs off. But, so the ileum is the end of your small intestine. And they found out that this little bit of their intestine wasn't um, creating lysine. Um, so the chickens wouldn't wouldn't grow that well. They were very unseek, very lethargic. Mm. Now, well, interesting though, humans, we can't actually produce the, the amino acid lysine. So we need to get it from meat, dairy, fish, and eggs. So yeah, and if you don't have that chemical in your body, you can't convert fat to energy and get real sick. But they, they found out that soaking acorns twice within 48 hours, it almost completely negates the effect. So um, no problems if you soak twice within um, 48 hours. Uh, there's also studies to say if you cook it though, you lose the omega oils. So the duck dog's really annoying. But um, so, yeah, so the scientific journal uh, proved through extensive study, you have to wash acorn. So if there's anyone out there that thought, you know what, Grant Sophia's onto something, I'm just gonna crush up some acorns, give it to them bad idea. And also this study shows you should never use acorns for more than 30% of their diet. So it works well for sustainability. Short bursts as an alternate food. All right, so if, uh, awesome. next question for me, what have you got? Okay, does the acorns affect the amount of eggs? Do you mean the amount of eggs laid or the weight of eggs or both? Both. Good question, so if, now this answer, answer was uh, answered in a study in the year 2000 in um, uh, University of Kazar, I, or Kazar, I can't pronounce it, it's in south of Hungary. And talking about Hungary, they fed the chickens a whopping 30% of their uh, daily meal 
acorn eggs. And the acorns that they used was a Persian oak, that's Quercus branti, which uh, we talked about earlier in the video. Um, and this study was called, and I've got some notes just so we uh, get it right, the effect of different levels of acorn seeds on laying egg performance in the first phase of egg production. So do you know what the first phase of egg production is? Um... Long pause. The first phase of egg production is when you wait till a chicken's 24 weeks old, and then it's 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 basically its first six months of egg production uh, before it would go broody. Oh, now, yeah. it, now the study used 160 white chickens. Now they weren't light white Sussex. What chickens are they? You think they were? The noisy ones were not allowed. Leghorns? Yeah, white leghorns. We want to get light white leghorns, but they're very noisy. So we hear so much. But this had 160 white leghorns, and they were all. Uh, 24 weeks old, okay, and it had a, a big, big bunch of 160 of them. And as I mentioned before, they were fed 30% of their diet was twice washed within 48 hour acorns. What was really noticing is they had zero mortality rate, so they actually didn't have the chickens dropping dead and dying, okay. Um, I can infer that Quercus branti, the Persian oak, might have a little bit less tannin, but it does good for us. However, the downside of such a big diet so far was egg production and egg size was down. So the eggs shrunk and they were lighter. And um, also they had what they call a high conversion ratio. That means it eats lots of food for what it plops out as eggs. But for a sustainability um, model and the thought of feeding eggs as an emergency food, um, it's a it's a fine substitute. Now, Soph, I know you're looking at a camera because one of our bees has landed on it. Hopefully it'll walk over the lens soon. Um, so yeah, so, to answer your question, Soph, yes, eggs will drop if you feed them a lot of it, but they won't be dying themselves. So as a sustainability food, or to feed uh, every so often, or once they're off the lay, I think it's fine, personally. Yeah, good question, Soph. Thank you. Do you have any more questions, Soph? Um, yes, what about quails? Yeah, we haven't talked much about quails, um, although it's on our title, Feeding uh, Acorns to Quails. Now, this was the, interest, the information I found the most interesting. Now, the, uh, the South African Journal of Animal Science in the year 2000, month was July, uh, did a really, really big study with 400 four-day-old day old Japanese quails. And as you know, South Africa is uh, on Africa. Uh, it's, a, it's a country that has sometimes a difficult climate. Mm -hmm. They use what's called Quirtus um, cirrus, which is the Turkey or Austrian oak, which grows really well there. And there's a lot of them there. I think that maybe from colonization or something. And there was oaks everywhere. And so the South African government wanted to see if it was possible to use um, acorns as a part of their diet, not the whole diet. So the uh, African government um, in, uh, the, uh, in a university in South Africa did, it, did a study, I've got it written down so I don't get it wrong, it's called shelled or acorn seeds as a diet ingredients on the performance of growing Japanese quail. So as I said, 400 um, four day old quails mm -hmm. and they fed them 5, 10, 15 and 20 percent of their diet uh, shelled soaked acorn seed and the idea was the uh, South African government wanted to see if you could get food production while using less uh, bought feed because it's a country that does struggle with poverty true yeah. okay and what they found really surprised me because as you know uh, quails need a lot more protein than chickens right yeah but they found that even if you uh, use a maximum the 20% of their diet um, acorns and notice it wasn't 30%, it was 20%, that it had zero difference in food conversion, weight, uh, and size. But remember, in South Africa, the quail was more seen as a food bird to be eaten rather than the egg. So it didn't study the egg laying, but it found that there was 0% mortality rate, meaning none of the quails died during the study. It's pretty crazy. So, cool. and then the uh, African Agricultural Department even went so far to say in, in, in the article, as a response to the article, I mean, that they suggest that all uh, African farmers who are struggling uh, should include 20% of their diet acorns because acorns are so plentiful and not used. So, if you're a quail owner like me, it's actually better news. Um, the quail, although it needs more protein, its, it's intestine, a uh, small intestine, seems better to deal with acorns so while acorns may be a sometimes food get out of jail food or just something used for six months in Australia if you've got um, if you got quails you can use it all year round but don't max out more than 20% now 
Now, as you know, stuff, I've got heaps of journal article facts and I could talk for ages, but as you know, we've got heaps and heaps of complaints that we, we A, talk too much and our videos go too long. So we're now going to jump into the next section, which is my really favorite one is let's start cracking those acorns. Whoa, even this guy's excited. Look at that. Wow, she's flapping around. Yeah, yeah so just hand, just so I'll just talk to the quail. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little segment on shelling acorns. Our method, another method, and getting them ready to eat. And I can tell you're a bit hungry, so let's get into it. Now up to the fun bit, getting our acorns ready for consumption by poultry. Now it takes a little bit of work, but it's no more work than, for instance, getting olives off the tree into a jar, which takes quite a bit of time. This is a lot easier than that. I just made that comparison so people don't freak out thinking this is a huge job. You gotta get them crushed, uh, shelled, and strained. Now one way to do it is to get an old poultry bag that used to have your feed in and start filling it two thirds with acorns. As you can see, So's filled an old poultry bag two thirds full and she's just in the driveway putting it in line with the front uh, right tire. Uh, usually it's good to roll up the end just to put it under a bit of pressure, but she's just making sure it's flat and, and ready to be driven over. Now it's always fun driving over things, don't get me wrong, as long as it's not kangaroo or small children. However, this, although fun, is definitely not the most effective method. If you don't have uh, any other tools, it will definitely do. If you've got 40, uh, over 40 kilos of acorns for us, it's definitely not economical or worthwhile because you've got to roll over it, check it, and roll over it again and again and again. Um, but if you want efficiency, go to your local, uh, go to your garage, grab your old uh, wood chipper out, and this is both entertaining and incredibly satisfying. Just make sure you wear eye protection and ear protection because they do sometimes get spat back out at you, the acorns. As you can see, I've trained Soph up with this. This has got an arm guard, so it's actually got a sensor to dump your arm in it. Uh, but you'd never ever let a child do this without full, full supervision. And ignore the dog going absolutely troppo in the background. You'll notice also the ducks and the chickens will start milling soon as we're milling around. Uh, because that we've done this uh, over the last six years and they're sort of aware of what's going on. And with a wood chipper, not only is it satisfying, you get a really, really good even chop. Now if you're feeding quails, all you simply do is put it through the wood chipper and then get that scraps and put it through again. As you can see, all the chickens will start hanging around looking at what you've got. If you're uh, chopping so, up or grinding up your first. acorns and a couple spill and get eaten by the chooks, since it's only a handful, it's definitely nothing to worry about. We've been doing this for the last six years. 99% uh, will go obviously straight in the bucket ready to be uh, strained. But that little 1% that falls to the ground, don't freak out if you see a chickens um, or even your dog having a munch on it because it's such a minute amount. It literally does nothing. As I said, we've been doing this now for six years. We've never lost a chook. Uh, and there's a dry scrap here that will cause no harm. And we just put a, the second bit of footage in because it's just so incredibly satisfying to watch. As you can see, the finished product is perfect for chicken consumption. And to be honest, it probably could handle a quail as well, but put it through again if you're feeding it to the quail. Yeah, it's so oily, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now. Now this is arguably the most important ah. phase of food production with acorns. It's the soaking to leach the tannins out. Now use just usual tap water. You want to completely submerge the acorns and leave them for 24 hours 
strain it and then submerge it again and leave it for another 24 hours. So that's 48 hours with two strains. As I mentioned before, it is crucial that you fill the acorns up so the water line is above the acorns. And you'll see why we separate over two buckets because we've got to really be cautious as chicken keepers to make sure rats don't come and eat this stuff at night. And I'll more about that later. No more in the center. Gotta have a fight. Now when you finish watching our beautiful Muscovy ducks ferreting around for bugs, I want you to just have a look at the color of this water. The tannin doesn't come out instantaneously. You'll notice when I pick a handful up, it's got a little bit of coloring, but it's still relatively pale. I want you to compare that to the next footage in about four seconds, after we have a look at this new English game chook that we got, but more video on him later. When you come back to the bucket after five or so minutes, I want you to now look really closely at the color change. Now, if you have a look, it's really got a coffee color. Now, there's a couple of reasons. We put, we stack the boxes uh, to keep the rats out, but more importantly than the rats, we have our other pets like our dogs. Now, if you notice, there's finger joints, so you can't actually get your snout, nozzle, or beak in there. You want that sealed so no other animals get in. As you can see, the chickens are really excited about the straining process. Uh, they've seen us do this for years, so it's a bit of a common place in our backyard. But you'll also notice when we do our straining, we do it around our exclusion pen for our new chook, just to help familiarize the, the birds with the new chook. Now, one thing that I really want to talk about is what to do with this water. Whatever you do, do not throw out this tannin water. This is the equivalent to brown gold in the garden. See, the thing is, Tannin are astringent, mouth puckering. Um, they have these things called polyphenols, bitter ones, and they're effective at deterring deer, possums, and other herbivores. And this is all proven in a journal report called Condensed Tannins as a Deterrent to Crop Depreciation by Whitetailed Deer 2019. It was done by the Wildlife uh, Facility in South Dakota, which showed an 89% reduction in food crops. And it's a non-lethal way to protect your plant. We use it around our cherry trees near our beehives because it's also really effective at getting rid of those pesky insects. Uh, this is also information that I got from a book called uh, Current Developments in Biotechnology and Bioengineering by Dr. S.Y. Rao uh, in 2017. And in his book, he talks about how um, adding tannin to leaves of uh, food crops um, affect insect growth by binding pro proteins and reducing the insect's ability to absorb nutrition. So this is a really vital, vital thing. So we store all our, all our tannin so we can use it at a later stage as an organic uh, insect control mechanism. And also, as mentioned before, don't worry if your chickens or ducks peck around and get some of the scraps as you're straining uh, your acorns. Already there's a huge reduction in tannin, although I've only soaked it once. But such low uh, bits of food, pecking here and there, uh, will not adversely harm your chook. As I mentioned, we've been doing this for six years without any worries whatsoever. Now what we've got to do is um, make sure you put a lid on your tannin so no animals can get into it, and then leave for another 24 hours and strain again. So now at the final stages of our food preparation when it comes to acorns, you'll notice the water in the bucket when we cut to it in a couple of seconds is a lot less dark than the original batch. We actually don't keep that tannin water because we just assume it's less concentrated and also we've already got a 10 litre bucket of it which is enough to do our fruit trees for pest control. So now to the bit where we're up to storing. So you'll see that we do just a half strain, getting as much water as we can. That's more so we can physically move the buckets. We move the buckets now to our front lawn. So when we dry our acorns, we don't have to worry about the chooks eating it constantly. The slow movements.
rays in the sun. Okay, for stuff. Don't need too much. Love to the camera. So this brings us to the end of our video and just a little bit of a time where we're going to show you what it looks like or proof uh, of chickens eating acorns. Now, one thing you'll notice is Soph's just got a cup of acorns. Usually we would mix it, 30% um, acorns, 30% carajong seeds, uh, and 30% sunflower, and maybe some oats in there as well. But this is just to show you how much they like it. And if you notice how much more aggressively the chickens are eating uh, the acorns, uh, that's just evidence that there's a lot less tannin and they're a lot less bitter, so they're really, really getting stuck into it. So that sort of brings us to the end. Um, get, get into it. It's a really good way to be a bit more sustainable, a bit softer on the environment, and it's also a great emergency food. So if you follow our steps, you're guaranteed to be able to have a healthy diet of acorns for your chooks uh, without poisoning them, poisoning them and helping the environment. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe or feel free to leave any feedback in the comments. Thank you. Goodbye. Don't forget to like and su subscribe. Thanks, Sophie. I already said that. Don't forget oh. to say goodbye. Bye.